Frederick Douglass was 48 years old. He had been fighting against slavery for 25 years. Now, by law, Negroes were no longer slaves. Now, by law, they were full citizens of the United States. But did they have true freedom? Did they have the right to live and work as free men? Most of them had no money, no education, no land. There was still prejudice against them almost everywhere. In many places, blacks were not allowed to go into theaters or hotels or churches. They had to ride at the back of streetcars. When they rode on trains, they had to ride in special cars. In many places, blacks were not allowed to be postmen or firemen or lawyers or doctors. They were allowed to do only the hard work, the dirty work no one else wanted to do. True, the law said that blacks now had the right to vote, but most of them did not dare to use the right. In many places, there were white men who did not want black men to be free. Mobs of these white men rode through the night to frighten blacks. They set fires and burned homes, and each year they murdered hundreds. But who cares, one black newspaper man wrote. I care, Frederick Douglass said. He was a successful man. He had many important jobs. Presidents and senators and judges asked his advice. He was one of the most famous men in America. It would have been easy for him to say that he had done enough. It would have been easy for him to forget the others who still needed help, but he did not. For the rest of his long life, Frederick Douglass fought for laws that would better protect his children. He fought for better schools for the children, better jobs for the men. He fought for the day when the signs would come down everywhere, the signs that said, no Negroes allowed. Go slow, Douglas, his friends warned. These are dangerous times. You will get hurt if you're not careful. I won't go slow, Frederick snapped. The only way you get something is to fight for it. So the years passed and he kept fighting. Frederick Douglass lived to be 78 years old. Sometimes he grew tired of traveling, of talking, of fighting. But there was always one more battle to win, and so little time left. Then there was none. It was February 20th, 1895. He had fought his last fight. It was raining on the day of Frederick Douglass's funeral. But early in the morning, people began to gather at the church, the Metropolitan African Methodist Episcopal Church in Washington, D.C. The church was soon filled, and still more came until 25,000 people stood in the rain outside. Many were white, some were rich and famous, but most were poor and black. Some were crying, some stood sad and silent. Then a woman turned to her husband and said what was in the hearts of so many. Who will lead us now that Frederick Douglass is gone? All across America, people were asking this question, but many others remembered that Frederick Douglass had written not long before he died, others will fight on. He had faith that others would fight on until the last bit of prejudice was gone, until people everywhere understood that one man's skin can be black and another man's skin can be white, but under the skin we are all the same.